Hi everyone, this recording is for class 18, which was on October 25th. Due to some technical difficulties, portions of this recording will come from the actual lecture in class, uh, but this first part is me recording it after the fact. So let's begin with a couple of announcements. First of all, I've already collected homework number seven, which is our annual worth assignment. It's due now. Uh, we are going to have another assignment due a week from today. That homework number eight, I don't have the assignment ready to give to you, but I'll bring it on Tuesday so that you can start working on that. One other announcement that's not pictured here, but is on our class schedule, is that quiz number three is going to be in class on Tuesday. So our next class meeting on Tuesday, we're going to have quiz three. And by the way, be looking for a message from me about an announcement on our class location. I think we're going to be back in the uh, computer lab for class on Tuesday. So uh, those two announcements aren't pictured on the screen there, but I will give you an announcement uh, just to uh, over iLearn to remind you of that. We're going to be talking about uh, unrecovered balance today, which is a concept that's important for us to sort of get a handle on before we start on rate of return analysis in more detail. This figure is what we're going to be creating with today's in-class exercise. And uh, in this figure, you can see on the y-axis, it's saying unrecovered investment balance. So let's take, uh, for example, a loan from a bank. And if a bank gives you money, then from their perspective, as soon as they give you that money, they have an investment balance that they haven't recovered yet. So unrecovered means that they didn't yet get back their money. So their initial investment means they have an unrecovered investment balance. So you can see it's a positive value because balance meaning that uh, it's something that's due to them. Over time, as interest accumulates, their unrecovered balance goes up. So here at the end of the first period, at the end of the first year, they're actually owed more than they originally gave out because of the effect of interest. Then this black line going down represents a payment that they've received from someone. And then you can see the interest starts to accumulate again until there's a payment at the end of the second year and so on. And ultimately, what we want to do is for a certain interest rate, find out how long does it take to get down to that zero balance. And so in today's example, we have a hypothetical loan of $85,000. And someone is going to uh, take out this $85,000 loan for five years at 4% interest. Now the first part of the in-class exercise is going to be uh, you know, very familiar. You draw a cash flow diagram to summarize the situation. In part B, use table lookup to calculate what the annual payment should be. But then in part C, I'm asking you to uh, start up Excel and create a spreadsheet where using these column titles, you want to find out how much of this original unrecovered balance is there at each of the years, and then um, how much of the payment is interest versus how much of the payment is going towards principal. Now, I've provided some formulas here, and I don't want to walk you through that in too much detail because I think you're going to understand what these columns mean the best by doing the calculations uh, yourself. So the whole purpose of today's activity is to try and understand the concept of unrecovered investment balance and then also to see the effect of uh, interest as well as the annual payment and try and uh, taking a look at how interest changes over time. One final tip I'm going to give you on Excel is, uh, you know, these column titles here are pretty lengthy. And so if you have a situation when you're using Excel and you have a very lengthy column title, let's say, for example, that you want to uh, you have a column title. This is the title of the column. As you can see, it is long. You don't want to have that many words uh, because it's just going to make your page really wide. So something you can do is you can drag this down a bit to make the row taller and then click on Wrap Text and it'll allow you to make the column width a bit more compact. Okay, So you're going to just simply transcribe 
these column titles into your table, and then you can see each column I've numbered. Use the formulas as are provided and uh, see if you can get a sense for what you're going to need to fill in the figure on the back of the page that's similar to this figure. This is what you should see based on the uh, description for the formulas and based on the amount that you look up from the table. So here is the table lookup amount. This is the balance at the beginning of the year. Then the interest accumulates during that one year period. And so now this is how much you owe before you make the payment. You pay this amount. And then this is how much you owe after the payment. Now this column five is just telling you if this was the interest, then this is how much the principal should be. Because the total payment has two components. As we wrote on the board, the total payment is interest and principal. So it's just interesting to look at. And it's curious. Over time, more of your payment is going towards the principal than towards the interest. So uh, this is showing after you make the payment how much you owe. And so here, you can just click equals and highlight the cell. You don't have to type in the amounts. Excel is always going to save you time if you just have a few simple tricks. Instead of typing in this value, just click equals and select there. And then you can drag it down, and it'll be looking in the correct spot. So how come it doesn't go all the way to zero? That's a question I got several times. You know, isn't Excel supposed to be very precise? It should get us exactly to zero. So why is it? Yeah, we use the table lookup factors to find out how much our repayment should be. And the table lookup factor was only accurate to five digits. And so there's a function in Excel that we can use to find a more precise payment that equals PMT. And our rate is 0.04. The number of years is five years. Our amount, 85,000. So maybe 19,093 and 30 cents instead of 55 cents. Let's see if that gets us closer to zero when I use 30 cents instead of the 55. Yeah, that gets much closer. You can see that there's still, it's not exactly zero, but that's because um, you can only pay to the nearest penny. And so over five years, if we paid any less than that, then we'd owe more. If we paid any more, then there's going to be an excess balance. So once we have this table, then I'd like you to uh, fill in the, the figure on the back. Try and figure out, you know, what are those blanks meant to represent on the figure? Okay, let's take a look at the solution. Okay, this is what it should look like when you fill in the, uh, when you fill in the blanks. Now, it's very easy to get a false sense of security today. You know, if you get the spreadsheet and you fill in the blanks, you maybe feel like, oh, I got it 100% right. It's not about filling in the blanks and, and just following the formula that I gave you. Really, today's exercise is about understanding what all of this means. And so let's talk through the interpretation of this figure. This figure is saying, at year zero, as soon as you take the loan from the bank, that bank has $85,000 that they haven't recovered yet. You know, that's an amount that uh, is out in the wind for them. So over time, as the interest accumulates, now they have an even larger unrecovered balance, the 88400 That's how much they haven't recovered yet before you make the payment. Uh, but you come in and make the payment at the end of the first year, that payment of $19,094 approximately, and then their unrecovered balance is lower because they've gotten back some of their principal. They also got back some interest, too. But the unrecovered original investment amount is the 69306 Then that unrecovered balance increases because they haven't got the interest yet that is due to them. You make the payment, and then it goes down. So the whole point of today's activity is to try and think in terms of that cash flow diagram and what are the components of the annual payment. You know, the payment of $19,094 has 
has one component that's the principal, one component's the interest, but every year it's a little bit different, even though it's the same amount that's being paid every year, because by definition that is what an A, an annual series is, is an annual series says that you have to be finding some annual equivalent of a present value. So here's the cash flow diagram. The annual equivalent of the present value is a constant amount, but from the bank's viewpoint, some of that constant amount that they're receiving goes towards the interest and some goes towards the repayment of the principal. All right, that's basically it for today. I'll, uh, I, we still have some extra time. I can wander around and answer your questions, but I don't have anything else for you today. So when you do finish, you can just put your in-class exercise paper on the chair, and then uh, I'll see you for our quiz on Tuesday.